Hey everybody, it's Kathy P. And welcome back. Um, this is just my opinion in this video, and it's all covered under fair use. Fair use commentary. But anyway, in this video, I want to go over a live Charlotte on the web did yesterday about K or the other day about KJ about you know without a crystal ball 7M lawsuit. She really thought she had a mic drop moment here, boy. And the uh, legal expert that came up on it, on, that came into her panel and told her, you could just hear it in her voice, how disappointed she was that she didn't. She really thought she was going to have something bad to say, you know, that, oh, this is going to hurt KJ. And it didn't. And it just, that's the only reason why I'm doing commentary on this, because I don't know, it's pretty boring. She reads all the paperwork. I'm not going through all that, but anyway, um, I just thought it was funny, so I'm going to make a little video about it, because we all know Charlotte is so obsessed with KJ, and you can bet EKC, she did a live on the paperwork too, she probably understands it less than uh, Charlotte, because mm -hmm, not a whole deck playing there, but anyway, let's get into this. The side by, or half, it was like half of uh, the picture of the suspect versus half of the composite drawing. Oh, and it about lines up almost perfectly. Except stuff, maybe. So, uh, fast forward a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm getting this editing little by little. Maybe not. <laughs> this old goat's trying now. For a night last notice of a appearance. Let's read it really quick. It's one page. It'll be real quick. Mm, you're um, never quick when it comes to KJ. Notice of appearance, 7 in films, Miranda James Derrick versus Catherine Paulson without a crystal ball. To plaintiffs and their attorneys, Amber J. Stavig, uh, then it gives the address, the undersigned attorney hereby notifies the court and counsel that she shall appear as counsel of record for defendants Catherine Paulson of without a crystal ball. And that one's name is Jennifer Moore. People get lawyers, so different let me lawyers, go ahead and it's exit okay, and all firms handle all kinds of different and law. We'll bring up some more. Um, let's see, what's the other one? All right, there's another one page, and it's a notice of appearance. And I, I, instead of sharing that, I'll just tell you what it says. Um, uh, well. To plaintiffs and their attorneys, the undersigned attorney hereby notifies the court and counsel that she shall appear as counsel of record. Same thing. Charlotte. Newsflash, this is all standard procedure. Yeah, don't have no breaking story here. It's just all standard in lawsuits. Maybe do a little fact checking first. All right, so let me exit out of she that. Truly all right, now KJ, we've got KJ an 11 page one. Winfrey. I guess I'll go over that. Well, her whole life is about KJ, it's unbelievable. How do you give right, someone so that much go. power over you, Charlotte? Over your every thought, everything you do is about without a crystal ball. Wow. It's too much energy to give All to right, someone. All right, memorandum and never affidavit met. of attorney. Um, I guess we'll go over the memorandum first. Oh, uh, yeah, she's going to read it all, people. I mean, she's going to read all it all. All right, so here we go. It's 11 pages. Big news. I'm not going to read it word for word, but we'll oh, just look, sure at, you you know, look it over and get to the gist of it. Um, you don't understand the Of course, the State of Minnesota of 7M versus Catherine Paulson, Katie Joy without a crystal ball. You automatically All right, introduction. Thought, Defendants she automatically thought this was a, a bad thing for KJ. And boy, when this, this legal expert tells her different, you could just hear it in the voice. Ask the court to issue an order requiring plaintiffs to respond to discovery that was served on August the 5th, 2022, and which remains outstanding. Plaintiff's excuse for refusing to respond to discovery is that they're seeking a protective order. However, plaintiff's requested protective order is so broad that it would render the process of discovery completely meaningless in that defendants would not be able to assist counsel in preparing the matter for trial. Uh, thank you so much for becoming a member of LJ Protect Society. Thank you. All right, so here we go. Um, mm -hmm. All right, moreover, much of the materials plaintiffs seek to protect under the She's really going to read over all this. I'm not kidding. No, she reads over picture. everything. That's funny. 
I still don't even understand what she's reading. All right, except for this last communication, plaintiffs have made absolutely no attempt to resolve any outstanding discovery issue or negotiate the terms of a protective order. Well, you know who else has not made any attempt to resolve any outstanding discovery issue? Katie Joy. Yeah. And you know this how, Charlotte? Um, Katie's not the plaintiff. It's up to them. They're the ones claiming this. They're the ones claiming discovery. You know, the, it's up to them. It's not up to KJ. But you just think you got it pegged, don't you? Don't you? All right, so here's the argument. Defendant's discovery requests seek materials that are relevant and necessary to prepare its defense in this matter. Uh, a party's failure to timely respond to interrogatories or make objections waives all objections except those related to privilege, work product, and experts' conclusions. And then it gives a couple cases. Um, mm -hmm. Regardless of the effect plaintiff's failure to respond has on their own eventual responses and objections, their failure to respond to discovery, even with objections thereto, places defendants, that would be Katie Joy, at a disadvantage yeah, with defendant, respect to plaintiff. establishing this, the discoverability of information under the rules. Because y'all know how Katie is. I mean, she wants, like, mm -hmm. all info she can get. Um, in a lawsuit, you're entitled to all info you can get and then some, Charlotte. It's not because it's Katie. It's how it works. Even stuff she ain't supposed God, to have. You're so obsessed opinion. that you don't even care how All you right, twist defendant's things. Defendant's discovery requests were tailored specifically towards the claims made by plaintiffs in the amended complaint. Defendant's first set of interrogatories and its request for production of documents seek the following completely non-objectionable information. So there's a bunch of questions here. Mm -hmm. Um... So, interrogatory number one, identify all persons who provided answers or oh, other information responding to these everything. interrogatories. Fast forward a little bit. Hopefully, all right, let me close this one out. Particular problem with the... Okay, here's the, the lawyer that Pretty came good. Out. How are you doing? Good, yeah. So, I'm I saw you covering well. this. I thought I'd pop on and... Uh, Offer a little legal commentary, and a little burst discussion. Her bubble. This is so good. Uncivil law comes up and bursts her bubble because she thinks this is all bad for Katie. And he has to pop her bubble and say, nope, nope, nope. But Uncivil Law's got a good channel, by the way. Go check him out. And he's really good. He's very sweet. Um, basically, what I'm seeing here is a pretty standard discovery request. See? Um, right. The, standard, the, the purpose of standard. discovery, of course, is to get any information that could potentially be relevant. <clears> to <throat> Excuse me. So you can't ask for information that's totally irrelevant. Oh, sorry for coughing, people. These <laughs> these fall allergies are a nightmare for me. I have such bad sinuses that, and these allergies are just off. Well, it's got my breathing all messed up. It's got me all messed up. But I love sitting out here in my, quote, bird cage, as they call them, but I call it a patio with a screened-in room. I love sitting out here doing recording videos. It's just beautiful out. Feels like a little bit of rain, though. But let's get back to this, because Uncivil is really good. But you're allowed quite a lot of latitude in Discovery, because you don't know what you don't know. That's one of the points of Discovery. You don't know what you don't know. And so you're allowed to ask for a lot of things because they could potentially bear on some of the causes of action that are in play. Some of the underlying, gotcha. at least some of the claims or otherwise, right? So there's a whole lot of things and some of them, you know, maybe there's information in the possession of the plaintiff that would bear potentially on these issues. So what they, what 7M did is what you, what you do. So this is kind of a standard discovery fight, right? So I okay. once discovery, they ask for the world. Listen to her voice. She don't the like other that. side files either some sort of motion to quash or a protective order or both. It's like motion to quash is I don't want to do this at all. Protective order is I want to it's constrained in some way or I want to limit the sharing of information. I want to prevent you from sharing the information outside the court process, for example. Mm -hmm. So I prevent from making videos from it because it wouldn't be information that's otherwise publicly disclosed. And what will be presented at trial would be in the public eventually. But, you know, we don't know at this stage what will be relevant or not at any sort of trial, right? So this is a pretty dis standard discovery fight. I don't really have any particular problem with these requests on first instance. If they're broad. <laughs> Excuse me. And I understand the motion to the motion or the protective order from 7M 
And in some ways, it's just kind of a standard discovery fight. So, kind of standard. So, they can ask for whatever. She can ask for the moon, basically, yes. as long as it has something to do with the case, right? Exactly. Yeah, kind of, sort of, yeah. You're, you're, you, the, the, there's a fill. Been trying to tell you that for months, Charlotte, but you just don't want to listen. Bring process, basically, in trial, oh, right? And so, so we're bursting. at the early stages of trial, so our, our filter is very wide, comparatively. As things go on, we narrow down the filter, right? And then we get to trial, and things are much narrow. So the total set of information that's exchanged is, go is very unlikely to be the total set of information that's I'll be trial, shocked, surprised because a lot does. of it will turn out to go nowhere or not be. I right. mean, there's been all kind of stuff going on with this 7M, and now they're disbanded, and dancers have left, and he's losing lawsuits right and left. So yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll all have to wait and see how it plays out. But if we listen to Charlotte, it's already done deal. And, you know, Katie's guilty. She has no clue. But I love the uncivil burst our bubble here. Elevin or, yeah, you, you wind up you wind up in discovery and the vast, vast majority of the time, comparatively little of it actually winds up getting used at trial. But you don't know what you don't know in the first instance. So you have to ask for everything because you don't know what needle in the haystack you're necessarily looking for. Right, right, gotcha. Yeah. There was something, I think it was on, hang on, because I'm not going to read this like word for word. That'll oh, take but you were. Two hours. Uh, okay, here it is. On page 11 of this memorandum, plaintiffs have failed to show good cause exists for the issuance of a protective order. Okay, they're now, the plaintiffs, not KJ. Yeah. Upon, yeah. So as so, it's, as, as, as so motion to quash protective order, different jurisdictions use different terminology. Sometimes they're different phases, but either way, you're looking to limit the subpoena. You're looking to quash it. You're looking to get rid of it completely. You're looking to limit time, limit exposure. Uh, this would be very common in business enterprises in particular, because you get, a, you get, have to turn over a lot of confidential information. Uh, business tax records, personal tax records, financial records, a lot that's private. Um, sometimes, depending on the nature of the lawsuit, <laughs> you're getting me. into methods of doing business. So those are trade secrets. And so you right. see, uh, especially in a company context, you see a protective order basically saying, well, we either don't want to give that or we do, we'll give it, but, you know, only for you, only for your eyes, or sometimes only attorney's eyes, if it's particularly sensitive. So mm -hmm. only the attorney can see it. And not the client, which is, you know, sometimes happens, um, or otherwise limiting the the ability to use information outside of the court context. It's like, you know, this is inf discovery is for the court purpose of the court, and so if it's not going to be used in court, then you can't just, you know, release any information you have because you're not entitled to that information, except right. in this now, confines. Let me ask you something. Okay, over on her social media platforms katie uh -huh. joy is saying and you ought to know Charlotte, because you stalk everything katie posts i mean everything that with a hundred you know she's a hundred percent sure that 7m is no longer like a business you know they went under they i, I don't know um dissolved yeah, i guess yeah. i can imagine well, that that, that would that would, only that would be really case. good for katie because uh, did you hear it She's like, oh, I would know that's going to hurt her case. And he's like, no, that'd be really good. She, she, she doesn't even know what to say. She thought she had something on KJ. The one suing. If they don't exist, they can't, they can't sue. Because gotcha. they're, they're, the, they're the first listed plaintiff. So who's suing? If 7M doesn't exist, then Katie wins. She can't be in default <laughs> because she, she can't like be in default that. to someone who doesn't exist. So... If, yeah. if 7M yeah. doesn't just, exist, then like, yeah, that's no, pretty good she didn't know what to for say. Katie. File that motion. Well, she's been posting about all of these dancers, you know, leaving. You could tell 7M. by her voice how pissed she um, is. Which to me. You could just tell. She's so pissed because she just thought she had a moment here where someone was going to back her up and say, yeah, this is bad and KJ's lost. And it, <laughs> and it wasn't. <laughs> Charlotte, you're 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 reaching. You're desperate. You know, I think about well, no wonder they're leaving Seven M. I mean, look at what all Katie Joy said about them. Uh, they're not leaving Seven M for anything that has to do with Katie, Charlotte. They're leaving because of the 
the Robert Shin dude. That's why they're leaving. The way they were treated, the way they weren't paid. He's lost lawsuits proving all this. He was running a cult. That's been out there for years, way before KJ. It wasn't because of KJ. Get your facts straight. I forgot you don't do that. Well, I can't speak to what their motivations would be or not. I and neither can you, Charlotte. You don't, See, listen to Uncivil. You can't speak either. You have no clue. You know, gotcha. I, that's beyond it. I don't, mm, I don't know what's She don't like on. this. And that's part of the reason we're, things are <laughs> happening. So I, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, like but yeah. I mean, I mean the thing that's was... sort of the most troubling to me is on the twenty first, the date that this is supposed to be heard is also the date for the default hearing, mm. because yeah. the other side has filed a motion of default, saying, "Okay, you didn't file an answer within the time periods." I'm like, seems like that based on the rules. Mm -hmm. And so, what is your response of okay, we were timely, or what is your motion for cause or whatever? And they haven't filed that yet. And so I'm like, isn't that kind of the more important motion, right? Now, or the more important filing, why, why the default is not proper? Them not existing would be an outstanding basis yeah. to resist the default. So we could file that. That'd be good. But something. What, Alberta I, 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 wants I, I, to know. I don't know what we're waiting for. Alberta has a question for you. She says, can Katie Joy get in trouble for causing the business to go under due to her lies? Sure. But she didn't. Yeah. The business going under has nothing to do with Katie. Yeah, I mean, it's the entire thing. That's like the damages element. Yeah. Basically, how much did you hurt me? To the extent to the extent that she's committed tortious acts, and those tortious acts have caused damage that have caused harm <coughs> to 7M, Excuse up to me. and including their business basically being, you know, ended, then yeah, that, that would be a problem. At that point, it wouldn't be a harm to the business anymore. It would be a harm to the business owners because the business wouldn't exist anymore. Yeah, right. yeah. Right, so 7M wouldn't be the person suing because 7M doesn't exist, but it would be a harm to all the owners of the business because their business is now gone. But That's a harm to them It is person. 7M suing. So, yeah. Now, on here on page 10, it says, Defendants did post that discovery is about to get real. Defendants did not post that they intend to post sensitive information they glean through discovery on their social media accounts. Uh, okay, Katie, but you post everything on there. Nor is it yeah. reasonable to infer such an intent from a fair reading of the post. Parties to defamation suits are entitled to obtain discovery that's relevant to the claims asserted in the pleadings. Defendants are entitled to obtain discovery as to plaintiff's claims that the statements made <coughs> by defendant were false. Excuse me. Yeah, she she somewhat errs here in sort of implying that there needs to be some sort of basis for the protective order. Again, in the context of companies in particular, protective orders are pretty standard. And to the extent you're talking about private financial information, they're pretty standard. I don't need any indication as a lawyer that you intend to spread the information. I could just be like, this is really sensitive information. It shouldn't be spread. I want a right. protective order in advance. I don't so she somewhat errors by implying I need a reason. I don't need a reason. I'm just like, this is sensitive information that should not go above, beyond the confines of But that's of not a big deal. It's pretty standard. Now, when, when would standard. a judge rule on that protective order? Would it be the 21st? Well, I, or? I, I, I would imagine that would be my, my working bet. The 21st, I think, is the day when this is <coughs> likely me, to everybody. all go down. Because we already have the default schedule. Um, now we have this schedule. And, four and, a half and so, so I think the judge would probably rule on all those things. Oh, he's just, he come home from VPK, and he's just so wound for sound. <laughs> so I'm only going to be able to do a short video because my kiddos come first. So first we have to get past the default, which I'd like to see some filings on that from Katie yeah. Joy about why she didn't feel like, why she feels like she's not in default. Maybe she's right. I'd like to see legal reasoning so I can actually go through it like, you know, a, a sane person and see whether or not she has it. 7M not existing would be helpful um, for 7M not having a valid claim. But uh, yeah, but this is a kind of a standard discovery fight. It's it's in, in some ways, it's, it's nothing special. You know, and I want I everything. I don't want to give you, you everything fighting in suits. That. She does, she has right. something. Yeah. I noticed on the other one, it's 23 pages long, but basically it's defendant's first set of interrogatories and let's see to plaintiffs by all right i'm not going to read that instructions in depth 
I don't know, it's just like the terms defendants refers to Catherine Paulson without a crystal ball, the term document. All right, it's just it's like a bunch of definitions, it looks like. This is just an attachment to show because because the interrogatories are not sent to the court. All right, so the court, did, the court didn't know about this until just now. And so they're saying, well, here's the interrogatories that exist. And yeah, I mean, again, it's broad. It might be overly broad. It might be restrictable in polar part. It's not uncommon to ask for more than you like. It's not uncommon to get a response back. It's not uncommon. To hear that, Charlotte? Katie's done nothing out of the ordinary or nothing wrong, Charlotte. You gotta move on. But I know you already made another video about these filings. Because you still have KJ. Jeez, you're obsessed. Uncivil, I don't even understand why you're coming up here. You know that this woman is totally obsessed with KJ. Granted, I appreciate you coming up here and breaking her bubble. She didn't get her mic drop moment she thought she was going to get, and you could hear it in her voice. But I just don't know, understand why you're coming up on Charlotte's. To, you know that she's a cater. You know how obsessed and how she stalks Katie. To have a fight over it. But, you know, a lot of this is fair game. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, you know, to some to some degree, even stuff dealing with the church is a bit fair game because that's a part of the issue. What is the degree, what is the degree to which, if any, that 7M and the church are the same or controlled by, one is controlled by the other, or what is the overlap? Because there seems to be some overlap in leadership, which doesn't necessarily imply that the organizations themselves are overlap, but of course it doesn't necessarily imply the opposite either. So like you can get into that a little bit and maybe there's something there, I don't know. That's again, what discovery is for to find out. Yeah, and over on that um, affidavit of attorney, I, I noticed too that they're asking for all kinds of stuff too, over in that one. Yeah. Which I, I guess is standard, like you said. Listen yeah, how disappointed she is. I wonder why, this is just a question I saw in chat. Um, Somebody said that this new attorney is a divorce attorney. So what? And then, of course, I guess Graham Cracker, he's some kind of estate planner or something. I wonder why she doesn't get an attorney like that specializes in defamation. I don't that know. was one of the questions. I couldn't really speak to that. I I don't know. Maybe she maybe she knows these people from prior interactions. She just feels comfortable with them. Yeah, maybe. They're doing maybe a good job. Do. She doesn't win no, she doesn't lose no cases. She's won all her lawsuits being dismissed with prejudice and not paying out nothing. So her attorneys are doing a pretty good job. Things beyond that, I don't know. Well, we know she's had her fair share of lawsuits. One of the nice things about the license to practice law is like you can kind of do anything, right? It's like, well, well yeah. So, you know, as long as as long as the attorney can meet their ethics obligations, and I see nothing from this that would indicate any otherwise. Then, exactly. You know, okay. See, surely you're nuts. getting shut down all the way around. You trying, you reaching. And see, and then they they attached, I guess, I don't know, some kind of memo or something. Uh, Dear Miss Hendrick and Mr. Martin, on August 26th, we filed a motion for protective discovery order in this case. The motion was filed due to the sensitive nature of the documents being requested by defendant. We will mm. not be responding to any discovery request until an order has been issued on the aforementioned motion. That's pretty standard too. Yeah. Okay. The timing on this, the timing on the response on this is really weird. That's the that's one thing that's weird. Because like there's nothing particularly wrong with this. And then you file them then this this document though should have been filed weeks ago. Yeah. I don't know why it's being filed now. Or she's like, fighting at anything. Because anything he says. To the like best of my understanding, engaging. they were saying, well, we never got discovery, so we don't have to answer. But they should have filed for a motion. They should have filed this along with a motion to extend their answer deadline. Yeah. And you know, Seems they didn't they didn't late. do anything. So it, it's I mean, just she's grasping if, at anything. The, 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 there's nothing wrong with the filing except the timing of it. It just seems late. Yeah. That's all, sure. And so no we have that bigger problem of curing the default, which maybe she can do. And and it's also worth <laughs> noting oh, that this is it's worth noting that this is an area where judges vary a lot in terms of their le leniency and stuff. They they say tell it to the judge for a reason, and when it comes to default, 
some judges are very unforgiving and some judges are extremely forgiving. There are just some judges who really hate default. They just really date. They hate that. They want things to be decided on the merit. They think everyone should be given their, their day in court and they're willing to bend over backwards to, uh, to extend people courtesies. And then there are judges who are kind of the opposite of that and are really, really strict. And like, if you're off by, if you filed it at 1201 AM the next day, they'll tell you, you know, so it's one of those things where a lot is based on the temperament of the judge. In addition to the law, judges sometimes go beyond what the law strictly allows to give people more chances. So she's not necessarily out we, of the woods. I wish we knew more about this judge's record and like their rulings and stuff about that. Yeah. Yeah. So the judge can be a merciful judge racing, or not, Charlie? which is why I always remind people rule number one of all litigation is don't piss off the judge. The judge has an insane amount of power over you. She just is beside herself. I mean, you could hear it in her voice. She really thought she was gonna. This was gonna be a negative for KJ, and she's gonna have all this to say. And no, honey, it wasn't. Actually, what Uncivil said is this: Eminem is no longer. That's great for KJ because they can't sue her. Mm. It'd be really nice to uh, remember that and. Uh, and try to accommodate them because they can use their they could use their authority for to help you or not. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, to help you or not. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Morbid says, could they have filed filed it this late on some kind of purpose, like a calculated risk? I don't know what that would be. Yeah, I don't think they're. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. I mean, I could be missing something. Like you know, Charlotte. Because obviously, I don't know what's in their heads. Maybe yeah. this is our. This is all part of some strategy. Particularly if they have a good sense of the judge, and they they really they really understand the judge really well and playing to their particular psychology, wouldn't be unheard of. Animal so lover maybe. says, "Sounds like they asked for previous lawsuits of Robert. What a hoot! If Katie Joy <laughs> had to provide the same." Yeah, but Katie didn't lose a yeah big difference. Robert has lost all his lawsuits for millions. Katie has not lost any. In fact, they were dismissed with prejudice. So that'd be a plus for Katie. Yeah, which is right, she yeah. she wants to get she wants to get stuff that's related to her claims because Katie Joy, as I understand it, had said that there were other issues or other people who had made these similar claims, comparable claims. Mm -hmm. How comparable they are is questionable. But to the extent that any such lawsuits exist, then 7M's responses in that could be used as admissions here, right? It's like, well, if you say something in one place, it can be used in another place too. Yeah. And also she might be able to get at some sort of discovery from that case to some degree. And so like these, these are not necessarily unusual requests again. It's not unusual to uh, go back and pair this down. On KJ, uh, most judges really do hate discovery fights. You know, they would really prefer the parties to to work things out, and most of the time they do. But when the judges have to referee discovery fights, most judges hate it. So this is like just, just, just do the discovery. Does Seven M have to respond to this? Hmm. Well, no, not strictly speaking. They don't have to respond because they were the ones that filed the protective order and she's filed an hour response and they're going to have a hearing. So they could file a response, which would be a, which would be more typical. But if they're happy with everything they said the first time around, they can go off their fi their previous filings. They've already filed. So they're already in parity. So. <laughs> Excuse me. I see you, you little fat squirrel. Okay. Did you get all those peanuts? All right. Well... I appreciate you coming on here because you just saved me from having to read all of that for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> no, what you did was you burst her bubble. Now she didn't have the stuff to talk about with KJ. But thank you, Uncivil. I really like your channel. Uncivil Law people, go check him out. He's a really nice guy. And he doesn't do the bull crap, which is why I'm surprised he's up here. But, um, I mean, he knows that she's an obsessed fan of KJ's. I mean, she is truly obsessed. But he has, he he breaks it all down so you get it. Him and Nate are both good. Because, you know, I'm not a lawyer. 
This and is this is the know. less sexy part of law that they don't show you on Law and Order. But you try yeah. to be. This is the this yeah. is the not sexy part. The, the reality of law is well, most mo the vast majority of cases, criminal and civil for that matter, get resolved before trial. So the 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 overwhelming reality of law is paper, and fights over some stuff that sometimes gets a little bit petty. Although to be fair, a lot of lawsuits are won and lost in discovery because what you are or are not able to find can very much dictate one side or the other's willingness to settle. Yeah. All right. So once that all kind of comes to light and that people are reevaluating their case in light of all the information. So are you going you know, to, this is, this, this is the unsexy the... part where people just have spats <laughs> and fights and it goes on forever. <laughs> Are you going to listen in on the Zoom on November 21st? Oh, hell yes. I'll be covering yeah, it on my too. channel live. It'll be great. <laughs> great. Me too. I can't wait. Oh, and we'll I see if we can wait. learn something. And I really hope at some point they file something in, in writing about the whole <clears> default <throat> thing. They could be yeah. in the right. But it looked 7M, what they filed, looked superficially correct. So I'm like, well, I'd like to see what you have to see if it, you can counter. You, you weren't you weren't doing so great on the merits, on the motion to dismiss on your counter, uh, yeah. left a lot to be desired. So hopefully your counter on the default is better. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here, y'all. Um, Uncivil, thank mm -hmm. you so so much. She's so disappointed. She just is so disappointed. Wasn't the moment you was hoping for, Charlotte? for coming on i appreciate it and all right let's see uh Mar margie says uncivil are you going to be speaking to the crew sentencing fiasco on your channel no there's nothing interesting about it he's going to jail for the rest of his life i know he yeah. flipped off the court and everything but what does it matter at this point he's going to jail forever so yeah and if you guys have not uh subscribed to uncivil law yet mama t is dropping his link Please go subscribe to him. We love him here. Um, mm. Well, I will go ahead and end it here, y'all. Well, she's going to end it, thank God. But um, I just, like, I wanted to do this because and you could just tell by the tone of her voice and, and her voice and her reaction, she really thought this was going to be problematic for KJ. And it turned out not to be. And when he told her that, you could just, you could see here that she was depleted. I mean, yeah. Okay, Charlotte. You, you go back to obsessing. Like I said, she's already got another video up about filings. So, this woman is truly upset. You can bet she will be, if she can get a Zoom link to that hearing, she will be there. And she'll try to spin it the way she wants it to sound, but it isn't going to work. But anyway, um, enough with the KJ obsession. It's just, whoa, Charlotte, you I, I don't know. I, I just don't get how you give somebody that much power over your life. Somebody you've never met. Unbelievable. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And again, this is just fair use commentary, just my opinions.